How's it? It's Lena Girl. One of the greatest slacky artists of our time, Uncle Ciro Pahinui, said this about my guest. He is keeping tradition and making music that flows from the heart and soul. He is part of the next generation of our legacy. And I can't wait for you to meet him. In the artist spotlight, it's multi-instrumentalist Steven Espanola on The Breakdown. Thank you so much for joining us in the Kanilea Sound Studio with my guest, Steven Espanola. Hi, brother. Aloha. Nice Thanks having you. you here. Thank you for having me. You know, um, when we first talked about, you know, being able to talk story with you, we were trying to figure out, oh, should we do it on Zoom? Should we do it on, you know, trying to find some software? Because you're not actually here in Hawaii. Yeah. Where, right. where do you call home? So I live in the San Francisco Bay Area, in the peninsula area in San Mateo. Mm -hmm. yeah. But originally from Hawaii, right? From Hawaii, yeah. Aliyah Manu. Aliyah Manu, Salt Lake Area? Yep. Oh. Aloha Stadium. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. And you still have Ohana here in Hawaii? I do, yeah. My brother, as a matter of fact, I'm staying with my brother now. But most of my extended family is still here. And, that's uh, awesome. So you yeah. do keep connected to Hawaii oh, when yeah, you come for back. Sure. Oh, that's awesome. Have to, have to. Brother, you know, I've always get a chance to research my artist before we get a chance to talk story on camera and i'm seeing multi-instrumentalist and then i'm seeing the words in like big letters self-taught <laughs> can you explain to me what what that journey was like for you well the whole reason i i even started playing is is when i uh, moved to california um I just needed a way to to reconnect to to my roots. And Wait, so you weren't playing music here in Hawaii in the time that you were growing up? No, I mean really? just just band kind, like everybody else, right, you know, right, right. trumpet. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, then well, and ukulele to to a certain extent. But everybody was playing ukulele, you sure. know, at that point. Um, but I just need, I, I felt the the need to just really reconnect, and um, I just dove in and just you know. Locking myself in my room for eight hours at a time, just you know, putting in the work. Now this um, is before the YouTube generation. Before right? YouTube generation, <laughs> these kids have it easy. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it was even no, it wasn't cassette days. It was it was CD player at least? <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, you sit there with the CD player, rewind. You know, listen to Kelly Boy, rewind. <laughs> um, Kyle Creator Boys, all that stuff is, um, and you know, just put in the work. Like, um, hours and hours and hours at a time. Um, what was the first instrument that you could say that you were great at? Because I know you play ukulele, you play guitar, beautiful, kiho alu style. Yeah, you, you play bass, mm -hmm. you um, you are a leo ki a ki artist, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that Hawaiian falsetto artist. But what was the one instrument that you really dove into first? I would say bass. Really? Bass guitar, yeah. And it, even till this day, it's the instrument that I feel I'm really the most comfortable. I would say it's equal with ukulele, where you don't have to really think about it. You know, you just kind of, it's an extension of you. So bass, guitar, uh, electric bass, and then um, upright bass also. That is awesome. Um, yeah. But let's talk about your ukulele journey. So playing ukulele as a kid, getting up into, you know, moving to the continent, really wanting to connect, and playing ukulele. At what point does Kanilea ukulele get to be a part of your journey? Um, so I met, Joe and Kristen, I think I want to say 2005, and it was all I was living in on, on continent, and I just sort of you know I, I researched a, a bunch of different ukulele companies, and it just happened to to come across Kanilea's website, and it just, something about it just really called out. It was it just felt real like family, you know. It just felt like real mom and pop, literally. And so I just reached out, and they were just so welcoming, and, and, and Joe and Kristen were just like, oh yeah, you know. And at that point, I really, I, I could only see the visuals of what the ukuleles were, and I, I couldn't really hear it yet. And then we, we just corresponded over, over the course of a, probably like a year or two. And when my, my first album came out, yeah, it was about a year. It's a, my first album, Ho'omaka, mm -hmm. yeah. In 2006, they surprised me when I played at a Borders, I think it was at Pearl Ridge Borders. Um, I don't know if you guys know what Borders is. <laughs> <laughs> Music and bookshop, who yeah. are we dating ourselves? Books, <laughs> what is that, books? Um, but yeah. So they, they came to my performance at Borders and gifted me my my beautiful- um, First Kanilea. Kanilea, yeah, yeah, super tenor. 
Um, Do you still have that instrument? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and you and still jam them? It's, it's it's still even though I have my my newer signature, it's still the one that I gravitate to, towards. It's seasoned. Yeah, yeah. It's just Yeet. something about it. It, it. It's the one that I I just reach more like first, you know. And then I was oh I gotta I gotta stop myself. Now I gotta play my new one. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you can play both, play both. Yeah, there's just something about it. And the super tenor, it just has that nice round, you know, bigger sound. Yeah. It's a Kanilea exclusive design, that's why. Yeah. Specific yeah. And, to us. And that's the sound that I think I was real like comfortable with because I, I also play guitar, so I had that kind of familiar, mm -hmm. bigger, and in bass, right? Mm -hmm. That bigger sound that I was just used to hearing. Yeah. Um, and then it counters really, really nicely with my, my higher voice. So I like that, that kind of balance. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. So that 2005, 18 years yeah. of being a part of our Kanilea Ohana. Wow. <laughs> that's crazy awesome. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, that's, and that's in the crazy. time we've um, had, is it two albums working on a third? Two albums working on a third. Mm -hmm. This most recent one is taking me forever, for some reason or another. I like to just blame the pandemic, but oh, yeah, it, it's, sure. it's me. <laughs> <laughs> so the first one is Ho'omaka. Mm -hmm. The second one is Ho'omaupopo. Yep. Right. Yeah. And the third one is Ho'o. Yeah, <laughs> Ho'o something. We were making a pattern here. Yeah, we're having yeah, a pattern sure. here. I, I'm, I'm, you know, because I, I came from that era of um, where there was still like vinyl present. So I like that whole uh, conceptual thing where you, where you think, like, where you map it out. There's like yes, a map journey, absolutely. you know. Um, and then each each album has sort of like a thematic thing happening. And um, so Ho'omaka means to to begin. Begin. Yeah. And then Ho'omaupopo means um, to uh, understand. To yeah. understand. Yeah. yeah. So your next Ho'o is gonna be like. To be enlightened. Oh, to yeah, hold somewhere else. <laughs> the continuation of that journey, right? Yeah. As long as it's not Ho'opau, which yeah, means no, to no, end. No. We're not ready for <laughs> yeah, that, right? We're not ready yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask, I, you are actually my first um, artist that I get a chance to be in this, in, this, um, in this arena with that doesn't live in Hawaii, mm. that doesn't reside in Hawaii. And yet, Native Hawaiian, continuing to sing and play Hawaiian music primarily, right? I mean, because I know you can do other genres. I've seen it. Yeah. I've seen you um, in your video. You 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 love rock. <laughs> you love jazz. You love blues. Yeah. And I've seen you do, I've seen you do metal. I, you know. Well, you know? The, that's the, the whole reason I got into bass is I was in actually an, an, an alternative in a band, band. Right? Yeah. And that's sort of how I got my, my music journey started. Right. Um, so I'm very comfortable with, with that sort of uh, space, you know. But Hawaiian music has always been your love. And that's, that's yeah. your center. That's your pico. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. Um, I just have to ask, only because I've never, I visit, but I've never resided outside of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. What is that like for someone to, to stay connected to your Hawaiian music, to stay connected to your Hawaiian roots, but living so far away from it's, our Aina Kupuna? It's, um, it's a great question. My wife is also from, um, from here. She's from um, Makaha. So... Oh, so she scrapped then. Yeah, the <laughs> no, earrings come off. Tittlebun, you know. <laughs> Tittle bun, yeah. Tittle bun, boom. <laughs> nah, um, so it, it's, I mean, it all really starts from family and who you surround yourself with, too. And so she, we're real active in Halau. Cousin Kavika Ofichi uh, is Kumuhula, Kumuhula uh, yes. of Halau that my daughter and wife both dance for. You know, so so just finding those ways to stay connected. And I mean, the best way to stay connected is to, to come Home here. every now and then, Yeah, right? and just to recenter and, you know, just absorb but we try to surround ourselves with good people. That's awesome. Yeah. But you are not only a performer, and you're not only a songwriter and a recording artist, but you're also an instructor. And, yeah. and, and you've been doing a lot of the festivals. Yeah. So in my mind, I think to myself, there's got to be some times where you're there maybe teaching a Hawaiian song on the ukulele, and you're the only native Hawaiian yeah. in a sea of other ethnicities and other, you know, I mean, genders, diversity all over the place. How, how does that feel? What's, that, what's um, that like for you? It's a responsibility for sure um, because I'm representing our culture. Um, so, uh, you know, I know if I'm getting the call to be at an ukulele festival, I'm, I'm pretty much going to be the Hawaiian contingent at that festival. So that's why I enjoy teaching. I, I love sharing what our culture is all about and just that, that might be the first time they've even heard Hawaiian music. Okay. So 
it's a kuleana that I have to, to bring with me to these places because I'm representing a whole culture. But I mean, I love it. I, lo I love teaching. I, I want to say I even got to a point where I enjoy teaching more than performing. But, really? Yeah. It just brings a different level of, of satisfaction, knowing that somebody's going to take away something that I brought to them. And that's a part of me and my culture, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and how is it received in regards to the Hawaiian music and speaking the Hawaiian language? How is it it's received a, when, you're, when you're teaching it? It's, um, it's amazing. Like, so, so obviously, like, I, have to, I have to share the mo'olelo because there's, there's not a native speaker in, in, the, in the house in most cases. So you've got to break down translations. Break, yeah. You're giving the story behind the mele. Yeah. And Especially with, uh, when a performance aspect, I always share the mo'olelo, the background of the story. When I'm teaching, I'll usually have the the Hawaiian and then the English translation right next to it. And you'll be amazed. Some people who have never even heard any Hawaiian, I can have them singing Ikona in 15 minutes. With That's pretty fun. passable, pretty passable um, you pronunciation. Know, yeah, pronunciation. <laughs> I was like, whoa. So you have to, you know, just point out a few things and, and it's all it, it's a lot of it is like phonetic, you know, like you hear it. And it's just like repeating and mimicking, and yeah. uh, but uh, yeah, it, it, and that just gives me a, like a, a really, you know, it gives me chicken skin sometimes when I'm saying like, like people who have never even heard the music are now singing the music and performing it. Um, well, I love that you that you've taken on that kuleana mm -hmm. because more most people they're they're out there they're like oh I'm getting paid for this you know somebody okay. is paying me to to teach and I'm going to teach what I know and you know if they like yeah. it awesome if they don't too bad you know because I'm getting paid they're clocking and, in yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah I'm just clocking you know yeah. but I, I love that you you understand that there's a responsibility sometimes especially when it comes to our our native tongue our, mm -hmm. our native language our music um, and that you carry that responsibility so seriously mm -hmm. you know and, and I and I love that it is serious yeah, yeah. yeah. oh yeah. yeah but you also have a responsibility to um, the next generation and mm -hmm. I've been hearing your girl has been <laughs> learning some music so you only have one one bebe yeah mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. My, uh, daughter Kavena and she's been she's been um, dabbling in ukulele and um, and guitar here and there, but not for me. She learns it all from YouTube. Oh, she so she's yeah. like you, self taught. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's self taught. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, Bebe, um, you have a you have an award winning artist right there in yeah. the in, in the living room. But no, she gonna go learn on YouTube. <laughs> oh my goodness! Sometimes I'll send her the links to my YouTube. Uh, you know, tutorials. Dad. And she's, like, she's like, ew. <laughs> but um, yeah, but I mean, kudos to the, the next generation who are able to just absorb the knowledge Pick so quickly. Up, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's amazing. Oh, yeah. But, you know, I mean, there, there's also a lot of, um, I guess you could say, when anybody is learning, there's like mimicry. Yeah. Right, you, you know they're they're gonna sound like mm -hmm. and do like, yeah. And then at one point, you kind of hope that they find their own style, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's exactly the way I learned when I was learning to sing falsetto. I, I learned by accident, you know, trying to sing like Gary Haley Mo or, or Dennis Pavo, oh. and just doing my best to try to sound like them. And then eventually, I started to, to hear my own voice and to understand that oh, I don't have to always sing so high. Right? And I can, I can just find what my particular range is and, and stay in that range. But yeah, it's great that the, the, the kids and the next generation are learning so quickly on YouTube. But then I always encourage them to, to like look inside and find what, what you are supposed to sound like. Um, and take some of the tools that you learn from, from whoever you're learning from on YouTube or wherever. And just use it as sort of like a, um, like a toolkit and just draw, draw from that. And then find your own voice and, find and use your that. Own voice. Yeah. And I, I noticed that you found your own voice, which I, I see you brought your ukulele mm -hmm. here. We don't normally do ukulele in the midst of our interviews, but I know, you know, Stephen is a little bit of a different kind of guy. A lot of my artists are like, babes, I love Kanilea. Just give me something that sounds good, four mm -hmm. strings that I can plug in, and I'm good. Awesome. <laughs> this guy's a little bit different. He's a little bit geeky. Yeah, yeah. I'm a geek. So yeah. I'm going to give you an opportunity to geek out and show us um, the instrument that you actually designed. Yeah. So so this is my signature ukulele, and it you know it was it was such a, a thrill to be able to when we connected and we were just kind of kind of throwing ideas out. I sort of had like you know 
this wish list thing. And kind of like the same thing what I did with my first one yeah. when I was building that. But this time I had a little bit more time to kind of soak soak it up, you know, um, just know what I wanted. And um, and we were able to to come up with this beautiful this beautiful instrument. And this is all koa. Um, uh, and then also like a, another a lighter koa around the rosette. And then ebony fretboard. Um, uh, yeah, just beautiful. The scoop was was something that I I was on the fence. Remember, I think I, yes, I, th I wanted right. it to be like a very Do traditional. I yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wanted traditional, but mm. but you know, I mean, we we love traditions at Kanile, but mm -hmm. we also love innovation. That's Joe. Yeah, you know. Oh, but that's. I'll, but after the eight hour day is done, brother is still working and coming <laughs> up with other things. Can I do this to the ukulele? Can I do this? Can I do this? What yeah. would this sound like? You know. And that's I think that's one of the things that sort of uh, why I gravitated towards Kanilea because they weren't afraid of trying new things. Where you know most other companies, they're just at that point and they just they won't try something new. They'll just kind of stick with what what's worked for yep. for hundred years or whatever. Oh yeah. Um, but you know this this scoop is is is, is great because a lot of people think it's. Um, you know, so you can come up here and play like real high on the fretboard, but it actually works. I, I'm a primarily s strummer, mm -hmm. so it actually, when I strum, it actually works really well to, to allow that clearance. Yeah. Um, right You're here. not cutting so, into your uke. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. I love it. Um, yeah, I love, I love this. Did you write Sakura on this? Uh, mm. I did actually, yeah. No way. Are yeah. you serious? Yeah. Not, that was I, just a guess. I, that was, that was, yeah. Because I Sakura been, is Nahoku Hanohano nominated. And, um, you know, when I first heard your the song Sakura, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm blown away. In my mind, I could just close my eyes and I could see a beautiful hula dancer, maybe along the along the ocean side, wind blowing in her hair, telling this story. Mm -hmm. And and that's what I thought it was, because I know that you are very connected to our hello on the continent as well as here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And then you shared the story with me of what Sakura meant. And um, it changed my perspective on the song. Are you comfortable sharing that with yeah, us? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so Sakura, it, it's um, we. Um, so ten years ago, we we, we lost our son uh, Phoenix Kahanu, and um, he was one year old, and um, it was just a the most devastating thing that can ever happen to anyone um, when you when you lose uh, your child. And it's never something that you completely 100% heal from and then you move on with your life. It's, it's a thing that you just have to, you, you live with it the rest of your life. It's just a part of you now. And one of the things that really, really, really helped us was uh, uh, my good friend uh, Puni Patrick um, in Kauai. When we were there visiting um, about a year after his passing, we were there visiting um, my wife's sister. and. <clears throat> Puni had wrote this beautiful poem, um, just comparing our son to the sakura blossom. Um, you know, something that's so beautiful and only here for for this very finite time, and you appreciate it, and then it, it, it disappears, um, and then comes back. And I just, it was such a moving, moving message that I just felt compelled to put music to it and, and arrange this poem um, into into a mele. Um, and that that journey was so therapeutic and that's what that's what I hope the song brings to other people is if they've lost someone that, that they love, is if they hear the song. And they might not even necessarily know um, you know, I've had people who 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 don't Olala Hawaii but they just knew by just by listening to the song that it just pulled them in a certain direction or just touched touch them, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's just the magic of, of, of Mele, you know? Um, so I hope that it can offer some sort of therapy for, for or healing to, for people who've, who've lost as well. Yeah. Um, and it, it continues to, to, to um, heal me to this day, every time I play it. Um, it the, the other piece of that too is is when we're working on this song, a lot of different components came together just 
magically, really, from the way it came together, recording. I finished it with Dave just last year, a couple years Dave ago. Dave Tusserone. Tusserone, yeah, mm-hmm. my producer. Oh my gosh. And um, Grammy Award winning. Grammy, yeah, Grammy his, award rates, winning. his rates went up. No? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Why not use the best of the best, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we were able to finish it in in the San Francisco area at my friend Chris Canojo's. And he donated his, his, his studio space to, to get me to finish the song um, and um, put this amazing lead guitar line, electric guitar line, that kind of resembles uh, the imagery of, of falling pedals throughout the, you know, and um, donated that. And just, and the video, uh, when that came together, we went, um, my uh, director, videographer friend, I heard he was gonna be in Santa Barbara, and I said, oh, I should just drive down to Santa Barbara. It's like four hours away, and then maybe try to knock out a video. And he found the perfect location um, in a beach in Santa Barbara. It was actually sk- scheduled to rain that day, and then on the day we started filming, it just, the sun came out. It was the most beautiful, <laughs> sunny day. Yeah. Um, Puni had had done her, her oh, and that was the funny part too, is. As I was doing that, we were just doing it in a real gorilla style. Like I'm driving down, I brought my daughter with me, road trip. And then I was like, I called Puni uh, and I said, hey, how fast can, um, do you think you could choreograph a hula to, um, to Sakura? And uh, oh, by the way, um, perform it and, and film it. <laughs> <laughs> so that we could splice it into this video. And that just came together within probably like a week. And she was able to have one of her um, so, kupuna. So Puni, um, not only write the poem, but, <laughs> yeah. but choreograph the hula them, and film them, it. Film them. <laughs> yeah. it, it was just, and, and and throughout the whole video, there's there's all different sorts of ho'ailona scattered throughout. There's the eel. And that's, a, that's another thing that I always, for me, anytime I lose someone, the, the first thing I look for is ho'ailona, right? Is, they're here. They're here, they're Just everywhere. Just in, in a different form. For my yeah. mom, it was the hummingbird that showed up on my lanai oh my gosh. Um, the next day mm-hmm. and stayed there and looked at me and it was almost gonna pull my ear or something. I knew that was my mom, <laughs> I was like, that's my mom. And um, for our son, it was the eel. And every time I see an eel in the sky, I just, it's always, I know he's here. He's there. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's all, it's kind of scattered throughout the video too. And you can't plan that stuff, you know, mm-hmm. that's, you can't AI that into, or, you know, post-production <laughs> and all that stuff, that's just there. Um, so yeah, and it's, it, it's, it's just magic. It, it, and yeah. this is all one song. All of one these. So- yeah magical moments these yeah. hands these helping hands all coming together mm-hmm. to remember your boy yeah please tell me let, let's let's do a real quick um future brrr, five <laughs> years ahead for steven where mm-hmm. do you see yourself are we going to finish our album <laughs> <laughs> it might, hey it might take five years to finish this thing <laughs> no, but, yeah. no 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 I, I i do have a plan oh, already yeah yeah oh wow <laughs> Oh, uh, not for Eddie. Come yeah, on. exactly. No. Um, now I plan to finish it this year. As a nice. matter of fact, I have time uh, booked with Dave. All right. Um, so on it's on trip. camera. Yeah, 2023. Yeah. This is the year. It's yeah. gonna happen. Well, All right. finish recording, but oh, maybe not oh, release, oh. But, um, <laughs> yeah. okay, got it. But yeah, I, I think late 2023, early 2024. Um, so now I gotta do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yes. But yeah. But um, I'm excited to see the great stuff that you're putting out there. I want to say thank you so much for, um, you know, as, as a Kanilea artist, I get a chance to see where my artists are going out there in the world. And Stephen is probably one of my my toughest, like getting out there and, and sharing music festivals all around the continent. So I'm, I'm excited for the great things that are happening for you. Oh, thank you. And where can people get 100% of Steven? If they want to follow you, if they want to, you know, see what it is that you do, what festival you're at, where you're jamming. All the usual usual places, um, www.stevenespanola.com, my website. I usually put my, my uh, performances on there pretty pretty, pretty quick. Um, Facebook, IG, Okay, and it's all on just my Steven Espanola. Beautiful. I don't have like a crazy IG name or anything like that. Beautiful. So make sure you guys are looking for it. Steven Espanola in your neck of the woods, especially up in Northern California, um, jamming his sweet Hawaiian music. Steven Espanola right here on the Artist Spotlight. It's the breakdown. Aloha. Aloha.